Wow, it's great to hear your voice. I just moved into a new apartment building, Basil Towers. Basil Towers, it looks incredible. Look at all those lush green plants. Yeah, I moved here because the plants grow all year, even in the winter. And I just love fresh aphids to eat. Sounds delicious. I do not like to eat aphids, but I love that you like to eat them. Well, aphids are pests that like to eat your plants. So ladybugs eat aphids to protect the plants, and I am a ladybug. Thank you, Leslie. I appreciate all the work you do to protect plants. Growing plants is one of my favorite things to do. I'm so glad you're a neighbor in my community. Would you like to come for a visit? My new apartment building is in the National Health, Wellness, and Learning Center. Wait a minute! The National Health, Wellness, and Learning Center? That's my classroom, and I'm on my way there right now. I'll see you soon, Leslie. Wow, what a great neighbor. I'm so happy she's part of my community. What makes up a community? Well, every community is made up of people, plants, and animals working together and relying on each other. I'm so glad Leslie's part of my community. Come, let's go pay her a visit. Welcome to my class, students. This is the National Health, Wellness, and Learning Center at Community School 55 in the Bronx, New York. I brought some things to share with you today. Do you know what they could be? Come, let's take a look. Oh, tiny envelopes. What do you think are in these tiny envelopes? Seeds, that's right. What is a seed? A seed is a part of a plant that can grow into a new plant. You too can grow new plants from seeds. Would you like to see some of the plants that I grew from seeds? Let's observe with our eyes. These plants are not house plants. These plants are food, food that we can cook and eat. Leslie, are you home? Hi, Mr. Ritz. Thanks for coming to see me. Leslie, it's winter. I wonder, how are these plants growing? Mr. Ritz, they're inside. They're protected from the cold weather. But what about the sun? Plants need light to grow. We've got that covered. These lights give the plants all the light they need. Brilliant. Now hold on a second. I don't see any water. These plants must be thirsty. I'll get the hose. Wait, Mr. Ritz, you don't need a garden hose. I don't. No, do you hear that sound? I hear water. Where is it? The water is inside the tower. Water is stored at the base and a pump sends water to the top. The water then rains down over the roots of the plants. Thank you, Leslie. That's right. And that's because plants drink water through their roots. What is that smell? Is that basil? Of course, this is basil towers after all. It smells so good. In fact, when I walked into the classroom, I could smell the basil. Hmm, I wonder what else these plants do. Well, Mr. Ritz, all plants clean the air and provide oxygen for us to breathe. Try taking a deep breath, Mr. Ritz. <sighs> Leslie, I feel better already. Of course you do. Your lungs are filled with fresh oxygen. Wow. Plants are such good neighbors. I'm so happy to have them in our community. I wonder, what else can we grow indoors? Can we grow all kinds of fruits and vegetables? This is my favorite vegetable. Do you know what it is? This vegetable is called bok choy. It has leafy greens at the top and listen to this. Snap, this white part at the bottom is crunchy. 
Mmm, delicioso. What is your favorite vegetable? Oh, tasty. I love it. We might have some of your favorite vegetables growing right here. Did you notice next to Basil Towers, there are other towers growing food too. What's growing over here? Wow, look at these vegetables. This one here is just a baby. A young plant like this is called a seedling. It's just a few days old. It gets bigger every day, just like you. This other vegetable down here, it's about 24 days old. And wow, this guy down here is 42 days old. Do you think it's all grown up? This basil over here is almost ready to harvest, Mr. Retz. Harvest means that the basil is ready to be picked and then we can eat it. Eating fruits and vegetables is very healthy. And remember, all fruits and vegetables come from plants and all plants start with a seed. Do you have some new seedlings to take their place? That's a great question. Let's investigate. Maybe we have some seedlings over here. This is a seedling tray. Do you see any seedlings growing? No, I don't either. Do you remember what I brought you this morning? Here they are, basil seeds. We can do so many things with basil. We can make a nice salad or a pesto or a soup with this in a couple of weeks. We can even put it on pizza. And Leslie, basil goes real well with aphids. I wonder, can the seed packet tell us how to plant basil? One, pour seeds into your hand. Two, place one seed in each hole. Three, water gently. And four, blow them a kiss. Let's try. Look how small they are. Did you think they were going to be this small? We better get these little guys in their new home. Seeds are sleeping. We'll come back and visit them later. Do you know that you can do this at home? This microgreens kit is so cool. All we need to do is place this packet with the little seeds into the tray, give it a little bit of some water, some light and some air, and let them grow. In a week, you'll have a whole tray of sprouts to eat on a sandwich or as a salad. You too can sprout microgreens at home. All you need is a plate, a wet paper towel, and some seeds. I wonder what's going on inside those seeds. Let's investigate. For this directed drawing, you will simply need a piece of paper and something to draw with, a pencil, crayon, or a marker. You might like to use a pencil so you can erase, but I'm going to use a marker so you can see it better. The first thing I'm going to do is draw a letter C. Look. Plain and simple, the letter C. Now I'm going to make a line outside the C. This is the beginning of the seed. I'll connect the inside by making a squiggly line. And then I'll do the same thing again. If you look, you'll notice it looks like a seed or a bean. The next thing I'm going to do is put a half of a heart. That half of a heart is going to become the embryo. I'll put a line right here and we'll call it embryo. E-M-B-R-Y-O. 
Now I'm going to add in a half of a moon. That half of a moon, boys and girls, will be the first leaves. A line down the middle. We'll add in the veins. And then we'll add one more leaf coming out the top here. And these will be called our first leaves. F-I-R-S-T leaves. L E A V E S. Now we'll call this piece around the outside the seed coat. S E E D C O A T. Seed coat, because that coats the whole seed. And then lastly, we'll put one more line here. And that's because all of this is where the food is stored. So we will call it food story. F O O D S T O R A G E. You can keep drawing at home. In the meantime, how long do you think it will take for these seeds to start growing? Let's turn the clock ahead five days. Wow, look at these seedlings. When I was in first grade, we had a classmate named Sprout. He was the tiniest student in the class, but he was so filled with energy. That's what seedlings are. They're tiny and they're filled with energy. I could eat them up right now, but not yet. They have to grow up big and strong first. This seedling tray is small. I think they need some more room. What do you think? I bet we can find a spot for these in Leslie's apartment building. Let's go. Hey, Leslie. Guess what I've got for you? You're gonna love this. Would you like some new neighbors? I've got a bunch of basil for you. They're so cute. And soon they're gonna be delicious and nutritious. Thank you, Mr. Ritz. A friend of mine just sent me this great book. Would you read it to me? Leslie, this is my book. Let me get my glasses. Stephen Ritz, Urban Farmer. My students inspire me way more than I inspire them. They give me energy. Look, I always wore a bow tie. Stephen Ritz was born and raised in the Bronx. His father was a first generation immigrant who was born in Romania. His mother grew up across the Hudson River in New Jersey. The Bronx is home. The Bronx is one of New York's most culturally diverse boroughs. The Bronx is also known as the birthplace of hip hop, which Stephen Ritz would one day use to connect with his students. The first steps of the journey. Stephen knew that his students would connect with nature if he brought it into the classroom. He started with fish. I had no idea what I was starting, he said. His students were fascinated by the fish. Never afraid to take the initiative, Stephen renamed his classroom the Biodiversity Center. The Green Bronx Machine has set up hundreds of school gardens. Many people in the community, including some of Stephen's students, relied on an organization called Part of the Solution for Meals. The green teens decided to grow vegetables for Part of the Solution. The green teens installed a garden on top of a local building called a green roof. Stephen collaborated with a culinary high school to help create a hydroponic garden. They won an indoor gardening competition and got invited to a gardening show in California. It was there that Stephen discovered an invention that would change his life. Leslie, do you know what that is? That's basil towers. 
For schools without green space to use as a garden, tower gardens are a solution. A tower garden is a virtual aeroponic garden that can grow 28 plants at one time. Steven saw the tower garden as the answer to his classroom gardening dreams. With his own money, Steven brought 15 tower gardens. Steven and his students learned how to grow many kinds of herbs and vegetables in tower gardens. Their success also led to the creation of the National Health, Wellness and Learning Center. Your new home, Leslie. Teaching skills in the kitchen is an important part of health and wellness education. The National Health, Wellness and Learning Center. For many years, Stephen dreamed of opening his own school where students could learn and where classroom gardens were the norm. Stephen, his wife and his daughter and his student family converted an old school library into a state-of-the-art green learning center. Stephen's students make epic happen every day at the center. They cook and eat the food they grow. They also give food to the community. Stephen realized early that real life connections are much more effective than traditional plans. He also found that students cared more about school when they knew Stephen cared about them. Family. Stephen's entire teaching career has been a family affair. His mother encouraged him to take the certification test that got him his first job. His wife, Lizette, has been his biggest supporter, helping him with projects and driving students to events. Their daughter, Michaela, was his class mascot, a little sister to his older students, and a hands-on participant in many of our projects. And look, here's a picture of Steven with Tim Blank, the developer of the Tower Garden. Every day, Steven and his students are driven to work hard and make it happen for students in the Bronx and all around the world. Steven and Green Bronx Machine provides 400 bags of groceries per month for seniors with cancer. Steven helped design gardens at the Sustainable City in Dubai. Steven has set up tower gardens all over the United States and in many parts of the world. Here he is visiting True Garden in Mesa, Arizona. Thanks, Mr. Ritz. That's one of my favorite books. Reading that book made me want to move to Basil Towers. Leslie, maybe we could show students at home how to draw Basil Towers. Yay! First, I want to draw the tower. I'll make one line of the bottom. I'll make another line, and then I'll make the top. We have the tower. Let's add in some sections. The next thing we'll do is draw the base. One line, another line, a circle, Wow, you can see how the tower is coming right out of the base. Now, let's draw the bottom. Wow, there's a tower garden. Let's add in one of my favorite parts. That's right, the cheese hat. One line here, another line here makes the rim. We'll go like this, we'll go up, Go around, go down. Look at that, we've got a cheese hat. Let's add in some circles. We gotta put Leslie in the picture, so let's draw Leslie. I'll start with two big eyes. Oh, I'm so nervous. There's my eyes. Let's add in a nose and mouth. There's Leslie's mouth. Please. <laughs> oh my, looking good. And Leslie has some wings. So let's give Leslie some wings. That's starting to look like me. We'll add in some spots. Where are my legs? And of course, Leslie needs some legs. 
One leg, two legs, three legs, four legs, five legs, six legs. And there's Leslie's whiskers. <laughs> now, let's have some fun. Let's color in the base a nice green. Looking good, Mr. Ritz. Let's color in the cheese hat. This color is called dandelion. It's one of my favorite flowers, and it matches my cheese hat perfectly. Wow, it's really coming to life. Let's give Leslie some life. Hold steady, Mr. Rex. My parents are going to want to frame this. Oh, yeah, look at that. Wow, looks great, Mr. Rex. Let's give Leslie a little bit of gray around her eyes. That looks just like me. Let's give her a red mouth. And let's add in some red around her face. And look at that. We have a beautiful ladybug. Now I'm going to draw in the vegetable cups. Students, I want you to keep drawing at home. Have your parents or teachers post your drawing on Instagram with the hashtag Basil Towers and tag Green Bronx Machine. You can fill in Basil Towers with all your favorite vegetables. Tell me, what are your favorite vegetables to draw and eat? Basil? Strawberry? Beans? Mint? Arugula? Kale? Cilantro, spinach, romaine, peas. I want to know and I can't wait to see it. So get to drawing. Wow, we learned so much today. Let's write down what we learned. We learned about plants and the communities we live in. We learned that we all live in a community. We learned that people, animals and plants make a community. We learned that all fruits and vegetables come from plants. We learned all plants come from seeds. And we learned that you can plant seeds anywhere. We learned that plants clean the air and give us oxygen to breathe. And we met Leslie Ladybug today. Let's get Leslie back to her community. See you next time, students. Next time, we'll be taking a very special field trip. I hope you'll join me.